1. Background Several years ago, I was working night audit at a budget property. Because low pay was offset by non-monetary benefits, including being allowed to bring the kids to work with me as needed. So this night I had my nine-year-old and the infant with me. Nine-year-old could have stayed home that night, but she liked to come to work with me, make keys, use the second computer to play games, etc. I had a rollaway in the back office for her, and it was all nice. The baby came to work with me every shift from Meiji 17 days until she was weaned. Just after the girls and I arrived that night, I had a walk-in. The lady was pretty skeptical of the property, highway adjacent, exterior entry, dated, but very clean and cheap. I had a bunch of empty rooms that night and assured Ms. Lady that ours was a really good place to sleep. I had put her and her husband on the quiet backside of the property, etc. All good, right? <laughs> no. Around 1am the fireworks began. Lots of sirens and blue lights start to happen on the highway in front of the motel. And then on the side street next to me, and then in my parking lot. I didn't know what was going on, so I hustled the babies into the back office, handed the bigger girl my cell phone and said, if you hear anything scary, call 911, and locked the door. Went to check all the exterior doors connected to the lobby. I then called my husband, he was a deputy in the adjacent county, and off work that night, and I woke him up. But, baby, there's a fat cop running across the ditch into my parking lot. The girls are as safe as I can manage, but I need to know what's happening. Find out now? I wasn't being mean. My husband is a fat cop, and I knew that fat cop plus running equals serious situation. Turns out that a drunk dude had sideswiped an officer three jurisdictions away and ran. He racked out about 75 feet away from my property and then took off on foot, ran through our parking lot, got tasered directly in front of the quiet room I'd sold to the skeptical lady. There were complaints. 2. Please be aware, contrary to the previous iteration of this story, no monkeys were actually pooped on in the making of this video. So this story starts a mid-range hotel that exists right off an interstate exit. The bulk of our guests were truck drivers or other travelers just staying the night, so regular guests staying more than one day usually stuck out a little bit. Our hotel allowed pets. We were supposed to charge $10 a day per pet, but my manager was really chill and only charged about $10 per pet unless there was an unusual amount of animals. Service animals got in free, of course. Service animals, not emotional support animals. This is important to the story. So I arrive at the hotel and relieve the third shift lady. I am unsure if she knew about this guest or if she was simply too tired to give me a heads up. The breakfast attendant was running late, so I had to set up breakfast that morning. All's going well. Not many people were staying. That few that were up already were mostly kind but grumbling about the cold. I live in a northern state and it was middle winter. After I started breakfast and made myself a hot chocolate, I went back to the front and was checking out a few truckers who had tossed their keys on the desk and waved as they left. I noticed a man walking around the lobby looking out the windows, but whatever. I continue with my work when I slowly notice he is now standing at the desk. I did a fast glance at him and asked if he needed anything while still checking out the guests. No, no, just looking at the snow out the window. Then I become aware of something very, very close to my face. I turn my head and look up, and I'm face to face with the monkey. I startle and fully give the man my attention. He's still staring out the window, and his small monkey sitting on the counter has now climbed onto the monitor and is just staring at me. The man finally notices that I am speechless and in a staring contest with this tiny creature. Seriously, its face was the size of my thumbprint, maybe smaller. Oh, that's just Lucy. She don't like the cold none. I'm waiting on my wife to get back with Queenie so I can have a smoke. Don't try to touch her though, or, or me. She gets real jealous of me and is known to bite. Meanwhile, I'm still staring at this monkey, climbing around on my monitor and counter at 7am. Because what the actual fuck? Then as I'm watching, this monkey climbs onto the man's shoulder and shits. It rolls down him and onto my counter and desk. The man's still jabbering about the cold and how they're from Florida, and the monkey is used to a tropical climate. 
reaches down and just picks up the poop balls and continues to hold them while talking. He finally walks through the trash can by the door and tosses the turds. He then pulls a banana out of his pocket, peels it, and eats it without even sanitizing his hands. I am thoroughly disgusted and still speechless. Finally, his wife walks in, instantly bitching about the cold with a small old dachshund who immediately runs behind the counter to sniff around. The couple ignores this, and I overhear the woman complaining about Queenie not doing her business. Realizing this dog is about to mark her territory, I call for them to please get their dog. The woman took great offense to this, as obviously I hate dogs, and why work at a hotel that accepts pets if I don't like animals? Lucy jumps onto the woman's shoulder, who then mean mugs me as she goes back to her room, and the man yelled for Queenie to go outside. I cannot explain how thoroughly I cleaned and sanitized the entire front desk. Afterwards, I pulled up the guest list and looked for anyone with pet fees. No one. Not one pet. Did they sneak them in at check-in? I waited until the manager came in and asked her. They are... service pets and are staying free. Yeah, you read that correctly. They made their two-week reservations claiming two service pets, then threw such a tantrum over the $20 that the front agent just gave in, and our boss didn't care since they were bringing in over a thousand dollars. That damned monkey forced me to clean and sanitize the lobby multiple times a day, and the couple was weird. They would go sit in their car staring at me through the windows for hours, not leaving once. Then they would come back inside complaining of the cold, and the man would linger by to talk about how much better Florida was. Their room had to be put out of commission when they finally left due to the stench and the needed carpet cleaning. Not the only time this couple has stayed here while visiting their daughter, nor will it be the last. It was just the first time. Each time they throw a fit over their service pets to get out of $20. Oh, and just to add, Queenie was very old and very, very fat. Neither animal was a support animal. Emotional support, maybe, but those are not covered under the ADA. A fact that can be confirmed by simply checking the ADA website. 3. Some background. I work mornings at a cute little historic boutique hotel, 7 to 3 most days. We have two different buildings, both of which offer rooms with a mountain view. One of our buildings has some corner rooms that are featured as premium king rooms, as opposed to standard kings, because they are slightly larger and quieter. One in particular is our most requested room in the whole hotel. It is the only premium king on the highest floor that is facing the mountains, and has the best view of them in the whole hotel. I have never once received a complaint about this room until this day, and most people booking premium kings will request this room number specifically. The only downside of these rooms is that in the summer, the airflow to them, especially on the fourth, highest floor, is not very good because they are situated in the corners with large windows. So they can get pretty hot. This past summer, without any communication to the front desk about it, naturally, the maintenance team chose to combat this by installing portable air conditioners in each corner room, with one tube going across a small section of the floor and pieces of plywood to hold the wires going outside the building in place to supply them with power. One day I checked a middle-aged woman, a true Karen, and her husband into our most requested corner room on the fourth floor with a mountain view. Fast forward 20 minutes and I get a call from Karen's husband, who notes that there is a machine in the room, used to the front desk, that doesn't appear to be working. I tell him I can send maintenance to take a look and he tells me that's alright and hangs up. Soon after, I get a call from Karen, which goes something like this. There's a strange machine that doesn't seem to be working in our room with tubes and wires that we can trip over all over the room and random pieces of plywood on our wall. Never heard of anything like this in those rooms. That sounds to me like some sort of air conditioner. Those corner rooms can get pretty warm in the summer. Perhaps maintenance has installed them to cool them down. I'm not sure, but I can send someone from maintenance to take a look, or I can move you to a room not situated in a corner. No, I don't think you're understanding me. Not only is this contraption in our way, but it isn't working and there's a hole in the plywood letting in air. I'm sorry to hear it's inconveniencing you. Again, I can send maintenance, or I can offer you a different room not situated in a corner. You clearly aren't understanding me. 
she hangs up. I think that's the end and they're living with the situation and spoiler, I'm wrong. Ten minutes pass and I'm approached by Karen herself. My manager is in the back and me and one other employee are at the desk. She comes up to me and starts her spiel. I'm in the corner room I called earlier about the plywood and the machine attached to it. Ah, yes. Have you decided if you would like to move rooms or have maintenance take a look? No. You're not understanding me at all. Because this is something that needs to be fixed right now. I took pictures. Here is the plywood, and there's a little hole in it. You see? Zooms in on the hole in the plywood. There's literally air from the outside coming inside our room. Can you see that? There is literally outside coming inside. I don't know how many times she repeated that exact phrase, but me and my colleague just stared at her in astonishment. Okay, ma, it is most certainly not okay. The outside is coming inside our room, and you need to do something about it right now. I repeat my offer to send up maintenance or move her to a different room. I work in customer service, and this is not customer service. You aren't even listening to me. How can you not understand what I'm saying? At this point, I don't get paid enough to deal with this. Ma'am, I am understanding you fine, and I have offered my solution. May I grab my manager for you? No, you may not. I'm speaking with you, and you need to fix this. I repeat my offer to send maintenance or move her. She repeats herself, refuses a manager, and shows me a picture again, telling me this is the worst customer service she has ever received. I am flabbergasted. What does this person want from me? I only have two solutions for her, and she is refusing to speak to a manager, which is unheard of in Karen world. At that point, I stop talking with her, excuse myself, and retrieve my manager, who moves her to a different room and offers her breakfast vouchers for the inconvenience. She demands a lower room rate as well. He obliges. We can all see what she was hoping to get out of me now. Free stuff, of course. And she proceeds to tell him I should be fired for the poor customer services I provided, to which he ignored her and told me I could go take a minute in the back if I needed, since she was so rude. To this day, I am floored by this grand miscommunication, but I do see the scheme she was trying to pull in getting a lower room rate, which can't be done without manager approval, hence the conflict. I also still giggle to myself about this Karen's fear of the outside, and sometimes wonder if that woman really just needed more of it. 4. Good early morning, everyone. I am a night auditor at a hotel somewhere in Nebraska. I have developed a reputation amongst the daywalkers for always being the one on shift when the crazy shit happens. So I thought I'd share one of my most infamous stories from this past summer. Our property has a decent-sized conference center attached on the bottom floor of one of our wings. This particular night, it was rented out for a wedding. I think most of you are probably groaning internally. Trust me, it gets better. I don't remember the specific numbers, but when our bar manager left around midnight, she said they had gone through three whole kegs of beer plus other cases and bottles. Needless to say, they were hammered. We typically keep our pool open 24-7 as an extra novelty draw to convince people to stay with us. The pool is isolated from the rest of the building, so a lot of noise in there isn't going to wake anyone up. As such, our policy for drunk people in the pool is typically they're fine as long as they aren't too drunk to stay afloat and don't break anything. We'd rather have them making noise in there than disturbing others by being rambunctious in the halls. I think you might see where this is going. So the bar for the wedding party shuts down at midnight. The bar staff cleans up, locks up, and leaves. This leaves poor me as the only employee on site for the remainder of the night. Several members of our wedding party decide they're not done and migrate to the pool. Probably about a dozen people or so. Maybe two dozen at the most. They sneak in some outside cases of beer to keep the party going. I don't really notice until it's too late being busy with other desk duties. They also... Uh, don't have swimsuits? No one is skinny dipping, thank the gods, but everyone is in their underwear. By the time I catch them, since it's just me and I was fairly new at audit, I figure I'll let it slide, yes I know, big mistake, and just casually mention to them that they need to have the alcohol thrown away by 1am, last call in my town, 
I think they'll be out of there by 2, 2.30 at the latest. I was wrong. 2. I check on them, still drinking. Cans and cases of beer everywhere. I catch the attention of one of the more sober guests and have him remind his friends that the alcohol needs to be gone. Right now. I watch him begin to pick up and throw away what's left, confident that it would be resolved. 2.30 or 3, more of the party shows up, carrying another open case. I stop them and tell them it's after cutoff and they can't be drinking that. I tell them to throw it away. They do. 3.30. I walk in to check the pool chemicals to find that the case has been dug out of the trash and give them all a final warning that if I catch them drinking in the pool again, they'll be kicked out of the pool and made to go to their rooms. I stare down a couple that was close to, if not all the way, having sex in the middle of the pool until they separate. Gross. 4. Several of them leave. I presume they've went to bed. I was wrong. The pool starts to quiet down for a while. I think it will soon be over. I walk in and warn the guests that the breakfast bar workers will be in in about half an hour. And if they don't want a couple middle-aged women seeing them in their underwear, they should probably get up to bed. This does nothing. 4.30. Breakfast bar workers arrive. I am thankful to finally have backup and other employees to witness the shenanigans going on in the pool. While discussing the situation with them, I glance over and see they have the back door of the pool, technically the emergency door, popped open, and are letting people in and out through there. There are, again, alcohol cans everywhere. Nope, this is not happening. I am officially done with their shit, I walk in. Drawn up to my six-foot, broad-shouldered, broad-chested height of bearded fury like a viking of yore, and yell at them to get their attention. I'm going to have to have you all get out of the pool and go back to your rooms right now. I told you to stop drinking several times. You're letting people in and out through the fire door, which is a security risk. I can't verify which of you are guests and which are not. Everyone out. Some of them grumble that the pool is supposed to be 24-7. Others try to argue to stay because they weren't drinking. I told them, too bad, you broke the rules. Get out now or I'm calling the cops. I stand outside the pool room, watching them drag ass out of the pool, collecting their stuff, and getting dressed before stumbling to their rooms. 5 a.m. The last guest leaves the pool area. I walk in to inspect the condition of the area. They have left garbage and discarded clothing all over the poolside area. While I begin to clean up, I notice a smell. Is that seriously cigarette smoke? In the pool room? Yep, not only that. They had been using one of the tables as an ashtray. I take a few pictures of the condition they left the pool in with my phone, log the situation in our computer system, and ask one of the breakfast bar workers to step in to verify that it does, in fact, smell like they smoked in the pool room. It does. I collect their abandoned belongings in a large trash bag and put it in the back office to, hopefully, catch some of the names so that management will know whom to charge the smoking fees to. I finally sit down for a moment, having had a very mild asthma attack right as a morning worker arrives at 6 a.m. Within a week, management decided that we can close the pool when there is an event in the conference center and only one auditor on shift. 5. It's ski season, and every weekend the same guest checks in for two nights. Same routine. She is a tiny person, but sounds like she stomps everywhere. She talks at a volume just under yelling, she gets flustered about waiting in line because she's here all the time and she should get priority. She should pay less because she's on a special diet, so she can't eat at the breakfast buffet. She comes to her small lobby to stretch and do sit-ups in the morning. Then a long story about her being a personal trainer in the neighboring town. More complaints about the ski shop next door. It's the same weird Groundhog Day routine every weekend. So three weeks ago she checked in, she did her normal song and dance, and then asked to see the weather and snow report. I gave her a copy and she went to her room. The next morning she came down raging about how I lied to her about the snow. I told her that we don't predict snowfall, that we just hand out pamphlets. She screamed a little about how she was going to report me for false advertising, and left. She comes back into the hotel a few times, looking around and leaving. Then storms up to the desk and says... What time do the local stores open? Everything starts opening at 7 a.m. I list the places that open at 7. That's late. No wonder everyone here is so fat. They're lazy. I just go back to reading off the rest of the places. 
No, that's it. That's why you're all so fucking fat. You lay in bed all day. I work two jobs. I haven't laid in bed all day in 20 years. My boss, who was around the corner, starting the coffee pot. You know, I think I'm tired of your bullshit. Every one of my people have treated you kind, but you always come up with some shit to say. Why don't you just leave? Bullshit. I could practically own this hotel with how much I spend here. Well, you don't. And you're about as graceful as a water buffalo. I can hear you stomping from my office. And your mouth from the street corner. I demand the owner's number. He's going to hear about your crass behavior. I am the owner. He slaps his card onto the counter. Make sure you leave your review on our website. I'll frame it and put it on my desk. He told me later that he struggled with his weight his whole life. And that was the camel that broke the straw's back. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Kowahu, number 32. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Okay, let me think, where does this put us? Uh, my head's a little turned around at the moment. Uh, Thursday, this will go up on Thursday. Uh, I'm a bit late recording this, but I was up rather late last night. Very naughty of me. Uh, everything should be done in on time though, so not to worry there. Not much longer now, then I think I'm going to play some video games. I'm mean, getting back on one of my Fallout 4 kicks. I've been, uh, I've been enjoying playing that in VR, actually. It's uh, quite fun, quite immersive. And uh, so back to building things. I did hit a wall, literally in some cases, in Vault 88, but I managed to find a way around it. Ah, don't want to bore you with that, though. Okay, uh, with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time... Thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.